Okay, today we finally got our frame back from, got one out of the salvage yard, got it delivered, so I'm going to be showing you what you get when you get one and what I'm going to be doing a little later here. So, as you can see, it has all the brake lines and some wiring and all the brackets on here. So, the first thing that I'm going to be doing will be stripping all the brake lines off and the wiring. Now, I'm going to tell you guys how you can determine this is a 118 frame. And without a tape measure, from, from the center of this bolt that goes through this shackle right here on your frame, to the end of this frame is 16 inches. And that's a 118. That's the standard cab long box frame. Now, if this happened to be a standard cab short box, or if it was an extended cab truck, it would only be nine and a half inches from the center of this bolt to the end of the frame. So if you go to a salvage yard and you're telling them, okay, I want a 118, and they go, sure, we got one, and they bring it out to you, before you pay for that, make sure that it's 16 inches and even without a tape measure you should be able to tell nine and a half the difference between nine and a half and 16. So if it's not 16 inches don't be buying it because it's either a 108 standard cab short box or a 123 the extended cab. Okay what I'm going to try to do here is I got to get this plastic that's what holds this these uh, gas lines together so you got to pry these out of here sometimes they're a little stubborn but you can get them pried out and if they break off no biggie because it all comes out of there anyway finally got this plastic out of here but what happened it popped back on the inside so what I had to do is go back there and wiggle it around so I could get the the gas line to poke through and then I just took a pair of pliers and grabbed a hold of it and, and just pulled them one by one on out and then when you tear your A-frame all apart they'll, you'll be able to get that piece out of there that plastic piece that popped in in case you didn't wasn't able to pop it out of that hole so this is going to be your access hole now for your to get a wrench in there and get these hold them nuts while you t take those bolts off and what you're going to have to do is later on you're going to have to do the same thing on this side you'll have to make you a hole so you can get access to that but we'll show you that later on but so that's how you get them brake gas lines out there and then i would suggest putting all brand new gas lines on anyway gas lines and brake lines because if you're going to have a new gas tank and a new engine, you don't want old gas and old brakes, brake fluid and stuff in the brake lines. So I always suggest everybody replace that. It's not that expensive. So that's how I do that brake, the gas lines coming through the A-frame. Okay, now that I've got everything taken out, I've got my gas lines and brake lines all removed and excess wiring that was cut. Uh, this is a two-wheel drive S10 chassis, the standard cab long box, uh, the 118 frame. So what we're going to be doing now, I'm going to explain to you what brackets you have to cut off of this frame. So we'll start up in the front. These are your bumper brackets. You'll have one on each side. Then you have the radiator core support front fender brackets here. We'll be eliminating them. You also have a fender brace that was cut at the salvage yard, so you'll have to remove this bolt, one on each side. And then we'll continue back. This is your front cab mounts, one on each side. One right here. Your transmission cross member will be eliminated. These you can just unbolt. And if you have a carrier bearing bracket, We'll be grinding the rivets off and eliminating that. 
Then here's the rear cab mount and your front box mount all in one. We'll be cutting it off. Then we'll move back here. These were your uh, floor supports on your S10 where the box mounted down on, one on each side. Okay, next is our camel hump. Now, for some of you who would like to run a gas tank, the S10 gas tank, we have the gas tank, original gas tank bracket still on here. The salvage yard took the gas tank off for us. So if in case you want to run the S10 gas tank instead of one back behind that we sell or the original one, you would leave that bracket on. It's just bolts, got four bolts, so you can leave it on. And then I'll explain, you would want to leave this in, okay? And I'll explain a little bit later what we do if you decide to leave that in and you want to run that S10 tank. Now, if you don't want to run the S10 tank, there's rivets right here on top. And at the bottom, we'll be grinding them off and knocking them out and removing this and replacing it with our brackets. Okay, then you move back here to the, the shock bar. Now, on late 90, from late 97 to 2004, they had the spare tire bracket and the shock bracket was all one piece and it was welded right in this area instead of these rivets that are in these early ones it was welded in here so you're going to have to cut that section out what you'll have to do is you'll have to take and cut about an inch in here cut out that weld and back to get all them brackets out and then weld a new piece back in here and then you'll have to re-drill some holes to pick up our brackets for the shock bar. Okay, back here is the old tire, spare tire bracket. Like I say, this is an older, this is a 82 to 93 frame, so it's an open chassis. So you're just gonna end up grinding off these rivets and knocking them out. Now, before you was to do this, I would suggest, and back here you have bumper brackets and they're bolted on. Uh, you may have to cut them off or whatever you have to do to get, sometimes you can't get those bolts out. So, But once you get your bumper brackets off and before you take this clear out, I would suggest taking a, a piece of metal or even wood to help hold it, put it in here, put a screw in it or something to keep the frame from spreading when you take this last bracket out. If you don't get something in there and it does spread on you, all you need to do is take a ratchet strap and ratchet it back to your 40 inches and put our brackets in, bolt them in and you'll be fine. So that's what I'm going to be starting to do next is showing you how I cut them off and then once I get them cut off, then I'll start grinding them smooth to make a nice smooth frame. So, okay, here we have our brake line bracket, the original one. Uh, what I do is I just cut this thing off, cut it off in here, and there's only a little bit of a weld back in the back and that you can pretty much get it broke loose break it out of there and then finish grinding it off, but we want to eliminate this because our shock bar goes across in here. Now, when we put our shock bar in, usually right here on the old frames of what I was talking about with these, with these rivets that will grind out and our shock gusset mounts in these two holes and this one. Every frame out there has this hole because of the fact that's where your box was mounted to the frame. Now, up ahead up here, there's a little hole. It's on both sides. You're gonna to have to take and ream that out in order to put our shock bar across there. 
every frame has this and every frame has this so this is our location for our shock bar and shock bar gussets when you guys get ready to put them in and when I get ready to do all this I'll remind you again of where they're at okay what I'm going to start showing you guys is how I cut these brackets off and what brackets I'm going to be cutting off I'm going to use a four and a half inch cutoff wheel on my grinder you want to also make sure you have your safety protection your gloves safety glasses and hearing protection so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting off this front bumper bracket show you how I do that and then I'm going to move on to this front mount right here cut it off flush and then we'll eventually grind it off but I'm going to show you how I how I do that first of all I'm going to start and make my cut on this side of this bracket because my I got a new cutoff wheel on it so I can get in here and get this first cut made so that cut, I'm going to cut this piece off. Cut off. Now I'm going to finish cutting off this bracket. that back so I can get access to this side here. Now, there's a little bit left here so I'm going to cut straight up so I don't have so much to grind off. That's just dead material. There you go. So now all you have to do is grind this off, make it nice and smooth. I've already did that to this side, so this is what it's going to look like. You grind your weld clear off, make it a nice smooth right flush with the frame. Okay, I'm going to get ready to, this is your front cab mount. I'm going to get ready to cut it off. And basically I'm going to do the same as what I did on that front bumper, or that front radiator support bracket. I'm going to start at the top. And then I'm going to come on the side. Okay. I'm going to try to bend this back around a little bit. I'm going to score it on this side first, and then I'll pull it around and finish cut from the inside so I can stay as close to my frame as possible so I don't have so much grinding. Let 
then all you got to do is bend it back and forth and you got it cut off. Now, you notice I don't have too much grinding to do, just a little bit of the weld part. There again, you'll grind this off, make it nice and smooth with your frame. Now I'm going to show you guys how I do this back cab mount and front box support mount here. It's all one piece. I'm going to show you how I cut it off and I'm going to make it simple for you. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut across the top of the frame like this. Then I'll cut on each side and get rid of the biggest portion of it. Okay, I made my first cut along the top of this frame. So I'm going to go to the other side now, finish cutting the sides off. This is what's left now. Now, I'm going to make a couple more cuts to get rid of this and this, and then I'll show you what I do so you don't have so much grinding to do. So you guys see down in here, it's this piece is welded at the bottom here comes up the side, comes along the top here, back down this side. Okay, now, some guys just cut this off and they start grinding. There's a lot of dead material here you grinding on and you don't need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut right along the edge of this weld, all the way up. I'm gonna keep going until I can break this piece off. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, right up this weld, all the way up. You want to make sure though when you're grinding, you don't cut into your frame, so you want to go little at a time and just keep going, and then maybe stop, put a vice grip on this, see if you can move it, stick a chisel and a hammer, see if you can break it. Can't, just keep scoring it, little at a time, you don't want to cut into your frame and if you do and if you have a welder well you're okay you can kind of weld it back but if you don't have a welder well you just want to make real be real careful so you don't cut your frame in two so I'm going to show you how I do this Okay, by doing that, you should be able to move this piece. I'm going to try this vice grip first to see if I can bend it. Okay, I can. So, now you see all you have is just a little bit of a weld right here to grind off. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Up here on top, on this frame, you've got a couple of spot welds up here. So you're going to have to cut. I'll show you. I'll cut along the top here. But right now, I'm going to cut this side off on this side. Okay, you got it to move, take your hammer, beat it back and forth if you want. Take your vice grips if you want to, clamp them on there. Then 
back and forth. Notice, see, I didn't cut into my frame. Now, I'm gonna have to cut on top, and when I'm doing that, you wanna watch so you don't cut into your frame here, because you're gonna have to cut that well a little bit. Okay, so now we got that. Now I'm going to cut right along the, right above the bottom of this here. And we'll see if we can chip that out and do the same here and chip it out. Okay, now you notice you just have a little bit to grind off. I'll watch so you. I just kind of grazed that side of that, but that's okay. Didn't hurt anything. Now we're going to do the bottom. Okay, so now all you have to do is just this weld around here. You don't have to be grinding on anything else. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to cut this bracket off. And basically, it's the same, same way I did that rear cab mount and the front box mount. Now we're going to cut this piece here off. I can get to it. side here. Take this one with a vice grip maybe. Thank <laughs> you. 
there you are. All you got left to do now is a little bit of grinding. Okay, this is where your transmission mount was on the S10, which you need to unbolt. It's just bolted in, so I've already done that. <coughs> and you'll notice you got two holes here, and you got the three holes here. So you eliminate that transmission cross brace. Now, there was also a exhaust mount sitting right here. So on this frame anyhow, so I just unbolted it. It gets eliminated. You don't need that. The only, when you come to these right here, these are where your emergency brake cables fasten to. So these brackets, this one, and then there's one on the other side you don't, you'll leave those in there. Those brackets, you'll need them to rehook up an emergency brake cable. So, okay, what I'm gonna be doing here is this is the camel hump. And the original S10 gas tank was mounted under this and has a bracket up front. Now, if you're building a 47 to first series 55 Chevy pickup and you want to run the original S10 gas tank, then what we are going to do is I'm gonna show you, you'll cut this top section off. You'll notice that this, this piece has a bottom piece and a top piece. The reason I have to do that is because if you're gonna run that original gas tank, you gotta get this out of here or you're going to have to raise the wood in your box. So by eliminating that, things you won't have to raise the wood. Okay, I got this ground off. Use my cutoff wheel. Okay, you'll notice. This is what it looks like when I get done. I cut off the top section, sits down inside this bottom one. So now I have to take a grinder and grind that nice and smooth. Then what you want to do is you'll take a flat piece of metal, shape it, and tack weld it back in there. And that'll close that back up. Now, that's only if you want to run the original S10 gas tank in your old 47 to first series 55 Chevy pickup. Now, there is two different lengths of these gas tanks also. You got a smaller capacity and a larger one. So this one I think was a smaller one and I don't think you're gonna to have to do anything to our cross brace. But if you wanna put the other one in, the longer one, front then we have box. our upright mount sets about right in this area right here. So you may have to do a little modification to one of our brackets a little bit, but we so also just might sell one that mounts in the rear in the box, under the box. And some guys, they even want to run the original gas tank that came in the old trucks. That's whatever you just Now, for you guys that don't want to run the original S10 gas tank, then we're going to take and grind off these rivets on, on the top. And then there's two of them down below down here. I'm going to take and grind them and we're going to eliminate them. Think about your project before you start cutting out all these, especially this cross member here. All the rest of them you can cut out. But this one here, you have to decide if you're going to run the original S10 gas tank in your old pickup, then you'll want to do this. Okay, what I've already got done here, I already <coughs> ground the rivets off underneath on this carrier bearing uh, brace here. Bracket. So all I've done is once I get them ground off, I just take a chisel in here, pop them up, she comes up. Then I come over here. I've already ground the rivets off of this. A hammer. Get them set here. Give them a good hit. She pops right out. These down here, they've already been ground out, so I take my chisel. 
Kind of work it a little bit. These I cut with a cutoff wheel. Cut this bracket here on both sides, ground the rivets out the top, or we got them not. So that'll come off. So now you just got these little ears up here. So you take your chisel, pop them out just like that. Doesn't take too long. Pops it out. All right, now we got this back one here. I've already drilled the ground the rivets down, punched them out on the top. I took a cutoff wheel and I cut off the bottom section here on both sides. So you should be able to lift that off. Now all you got is these little brackets here. By cutting these off like this, it is easier to get them brackets clear out of there. So then you just take your chisel again, start working. Just pop out. Just like that. Got one more here. Do the same thing. You want to grind the rivets off from the bottom side, make them nice and smooth. That way they pop right off then. Okay. This is that brake line tab the, the original brake line was hooked to. So well, I got a, two more right here. This is smaller than bracket. Just take your chisel. You just pop out. You can see that I've ground the rivets off on the bottom side flush with the bottom of the frame so they pop right out. Now this bracket is welded back here on the back. It's welded up here in the front of this bracket. So what I've done, I've already cut, I took a plasma cutter and I cut the back portion of this off already. You can use a torch. I'd be able to get in there with a cutoff wheel but I don't know. Now I just gotta work this Piece. Okay, what I done is I cut that upper bracket off with a cutoff wheel back to here. So I just got the flat piece. Now I'm taking the chisel, just working it up. There you go. Now you can just grind off your little bit of well there and back in the back, and you got it done.